Joining us right now is Sam Stovall. He's chief economist or chief investment strategist, I should say, at CFRA Research. And Sam, you've got uh, a lot going on right now with uh, this week, all the news that's going to be coming in. What's the most important factor right now? Is it going to be the Fed or is it going to be earnings? Well, good morning, Becky. Bonjour. I would tend to say Bonjour. that uh, it's going to be uh, both earnings and the Fed, um, primarily with the earnings, because we did have that disappointment last week from Alphabet and from Tesla. And I think investors are wondering, gee, what kind of stumbles could we experience in the week ahead? Uh, uh, one third of the stocks in the 500 will be reporting and 40 percent of the market cap of technology will be reporting this week with 26 stocks in the 500. So I would tend to say that a lot of eyes will be there. Uh, a non-event, oh, I think, will be the uh, unemployment numbers uh, on Friday, but uh, surprise. Hey, Sam, um, we've been talking an awful lot about this rotation out of the big caps into small caps. But when you've seen some big stumbles, when you've seen things like what we saw last week with some of the earnings disappointments and what some of the mega caps have done, is it enough for the small caps to kind of take over and, and carry on this rally? Will that be something that will save the averages overall? Not by themselves. Uh, the mid and small cap index uh, in the S&P 1500 really only represents about 8%. So if one were to think that everybody's going to rotate out of large caps and into mid and small, it would be like saying you, you think you could drain one of the Great Lakes into your backyard swimming pool. So I would tend to say that the good thing is that uh, in the decline period when the S&P fell nearly 5% just recently, you had 8 of 11 sectors outperform the S&P and you had 75% of the 155 sub-industries outperform the overall market. So so it's not just a rotation into the mid and small caps, but into the also rands of the large cap. All right. So let's talk about what you think just with these tech big caps. Are they going to have the power to really continue to move higher? Well, we believe that they will. Uh, expectations are that for communication services, you'll see a 25% increase in earnings versus the now 9.3% growth projected for the S&P 500. Uh, the technology sector is expected to show a 17% advance. Semiconductors likely to show uh, a 53% increase. So still very strong expectations for the sector in general and for particular sub-industries. Where's the bias right now for investors? If, if we get disappointing news either from earnings or if uh, Chairman Powell sounds a little more hawkish than the markets are anticipating, is that enough that it would run it kind of rock things? Or if you get surprises to the upside, both on, in terms of more uh, dovish sentiment from Powell in terms of better than expected numbers, is, is that something that you think will power the indexes higher? Uh, I, I think that uh, if we did have Fed Chair Powell say some hawkish sh statements, that, that would be a concern across the board, because while the fundamentals have looked very attractive for mid and small caps, investors have waited until near certainty that the Fed will be cutting rates shortly. Right now, both the S&P mid cap 400, small cap 600 are trading at 30 percent relative P.E. discounts to the S&P 500. And that, I think, is what's driving the uh, rotation into these smaller companies. But if the prospect is that the Fed will continue to keep rates high, that increases the risk of recession. And definitely mid and smalls would get hurt more than the large caps. Okay, then let me uh, move forward to the end of this week. I don't think we've spent much time thinking about the jobs number because we have so much news to digest before we get there. But if that's the case, even if Powell is pretty dovish in his commentary, if we get a much stronger than expected jobs report, does that put everything back in play again? Well, I think it would end up postponing the uh, euphoria of investors uh, because we're expecting 185,000 new jobs uh, as compared with 206 last month. And so if we end up with a substantially stronger number, then I think investors will start to wonder, well, maybe the Fed will wait until December or at least after the election to make the first rate cut. Right now, as you know as well as I, the uh, expectation is for a September cut with dovish statements this, this Wednesday. Wednesday, but uh, if the employment numbers come in much higher than anticipated, that could postpone that first cut.